Hey everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. I was at Walgreens the other day and they had discounted a Rogue One Star Wars Cassian Andor blaster from like $29 to $12. It's a Nerf gun. I don't spend $30 on Nerf guns unless it's necessary, but since it was uh, you know, like 55% off, I decided, I decided to go ahead and grab it and give you a demonstration on how to do a repaint. So this is the one I bought. This is the one I bought. And the finished product is this. Just kidding. That's not it. It's this. Much more of a movie quality prop that you can use for your next cosplay for Star Wars Rogue One. Feels a little smaller than uh, the reference images that I found. I, didn't, I couldn't find a whole lot of reference images. So the ones I did find appeared that these were, this is close enough to the size of the movie. I removed a couple pieces, took the batteries out so it no longer makes the crazy noises. And this is the reference image I found. And I think we're right on the money. I think it's a pretty good job for what we've got. And I'm going to show you how to do a repaint on any kind of gun. But specifically in this video, Cassian Andor's Blaster from Rogue One. Pew pew! Pew pew! Is that the noise they make? Pew pew! Nope. Alright, let's get started. Alright, here is the blaster that I picked up from Walgreens. I got it for 50% off. It is Cassian Andor's Blaster. So once you go ahead and get that free from your packaging, check it out and you'll see that there's some pieces uh, that don't really fit the actual piece and then boop! I don't know what that was. It didn't work very well. It even lights up on the inside, but I'm going to take all that out. So take a minute to play with your blaster before you take it apart. Pew! Pew pew! Try it again, see if you can break your camera, because that's what you should probably do with your camera. Now that you're done, go ahead and take everything apart. I started with the battery compartment, took all the batteries out, and gave it a light sanding. There's a lot of wording on this that I could get off with my rotary tool, things that said Made in China, etc., and then the Star Wars logo. Bye, George Lucas is ticked now. But go ahead and get all those things off, grab a reference image, and then compare that to what you have. This doesn't have a piece in the back in the actual reference image, this little cocker piece, so we're going to get rid of that. So I'm going to go ahead and take the whole thing apart, taking out all the little screws until it comes apart. Make sure you keep the screws in some small container so they don't fall and roll away, never to be seen again. Once you have it apart, decide what you're going to keep and what you're going to take apart. Uh, I kept everything, well actually I removed everything minus the trigger and there's a little tiny plastic piece at the very top that I kept. But everything else got cut out and removed, which made it a little bit lighter. You could take an opportunity to put something heavy inside before you close it up if you wish to give it a little more realistic weight. I didn't do that. Uh, there was also a couple little LED lights that I went ahead and kept. I might be able to use them sometime in the future. There they are. So, you know, why not scavenge? So once you got everything out and put back the way you want it, make sure the trigger's in the right spot and everything, and it's working, put all the screws back inside the holes, and we're going to move on to making this look more like a realistic blaster prop versus this plastic toy. There are some issues that I ran into, like this screw is too tall. Even when it's all the way cinched down, the head of it sticks out beyond what I'd like. So I took my rotary tool and I just sanded it down, made some funnel sparks and fireworks, and flattened it out to make it so that it recesses a little bit lower below the surface. So when I do some additional um, things with it, it won't be such an issue. Now we're going to fill the holes and things like that. I'm going to use some glazing and spot putty, which is what they use in the automobile industry. It's kind of like Bondo, except it's all in one mixture. 
Bondo has the Bondo itself, then it has a hardener that you have to mix together to get the consistency you want. This can be done just with one mixture and a easy to use container. So I highly recommend it for things like this. As you can see, all I'm doing is putting some of the glazing putty into the screw holes and also on the center piece of the magazine. I don't want that center piece there just because it's hard to really explain, but the center piece of the magazine it has three grooves. The middle groove has the bolt in it for the battery compartment, and I want that to be gone. So I'm just going to put a layer over the entire piece, which you can't see here because I haven't done it yet, but over that entire middle piece to make it flush so we can have a magazine with just two ridges instead of three, but we get rid of the part where the bolt sticks up. Don't forget to try to get some of the seams where the plastic pieces, the halves, meet. You're going to have to uh, work with that too. Now after it's dry, you can see here that uh, the holes are pretty much all filled in. I'm going to do a little bit of light sanding and uh, I'm going to add a little bit more Bondo to the places where I need it, like up in here and on the back. You can't see it here, but there was an opening in the back where the cocking mechanism was and that is a stir stick, I'm sorry, a popsicle stick wrapped in sandpaper that I use to do some sanding. But right there where I'm sanding was an opening where the cocker device was. I took that out, put a little piece of foam in there, and then put a thin layer of the spot putty glaze over it to kind of fill in that hole. And after two layers and a little bit of sanding, you can hardly tell there was a hole there at all. And it was a quite large hole. So here it is, all done, and I put a quick layer of Bondo, I'm sorry, two layers of primer on it. And as you can see, the cracks where the two halves meet really show up where they meet. So I'm going to add more Bondo here and sand it. I'm also going to add a little bit more Bondo. I keep calling it Bondo, but it's the glazing putty. But I'm going to add a little bit more, and I'm going to sand it a little flusher. And once that's done, you'll have something that looks like this. You can see here where the middle piece is completely flush now. It could probably done, be done a little bit better, but this is fine enough for what I'm doing. So now I'm just going to do an entire two coat base coat of regular flat black acrylic paint. This is going to be my base coat for what I'm going to paint with, as the gun is mostly black and has some silver highlights. I used my heat gun to speed dry it so I can go ahead and add the second layer, and then I'm going to flip it over and do two layers on the other side as well. Here it is done. It's nice and dark and one continuous black color. It's starting to look a lot like this reference image here, but you can see that there's two really silvery parts, the very back and the very front. So I'm gonna take the opportunity to take some of this metallic acrylic paint and put two layers on those two pieces. And of course, I'm going to speed dry them with my heat gun as well. I would really recommend using a hair dryer because heat gun can make your paint bubble if you get it too hot. But that's what I have down in my shop and that's what I use. So after you get two layers and they're dry, you can move on to the next part. That next part is filling in little parts that you want to stand out. I did this little dial, the little pin for the ejector port, and a couple other spots that you will see here in just a second. And there it is. You can see where I covered the seams with some Bondo and sanded it. You no longer see the connection where the two halves meet and it looks a lot better that way. Now we're going to add some highlights using some silver rub and buff. The rub and buff is just a wax paint compound that you put on a piece of paper or something. You dab your finger in it, you don't need a paintbrush, and you only put a little itty bitty tiny bit on there and then you lightly touch areas and it brings those highlights out. Now I'm going to go over both sides, really working it in with my fingers. If it gets too, too bright in one area, I'll use a clean finger and try to rub it a little bit more and work some of the sheen down off of it so it's not too bright. I'm also going to add some wear and tear to like the edges of the magazine, things like that where it makes it look like it's been used. So just really rub it in and work it in the best you can. Once that's done, we're going to seal our paint job at this point. I'm going to seal it with matte varnish. This is a brushable varnish that you put on that will protect your paint job so the next step won't ruin 
the underlying paint job. So this is basically a protection layer. So do one good coat on both sides, allow it to dry or speed dry it using a hair dryer or heat gun, and then you'll have this. Next we're just going to add some weathering to it. I have some watered down black acrylic paint and I'm just going to put a little bit on and wipe it away with a dry paper towel. And it's really hard to see here, but it leaves grime and things in all the cracks and crevices. And this really gives it a, a look of realism and really makes it look like it's been used and it's been out in the, the wars and things like that in battle. So once you're done, you can do that to both sides and it'll, it will make it look a lot better. And here's an example of how the weathering looks. On the back here, it's nice and bright silver. I'm going to add some and then I'm going to wipe it away and it'll look like there's grease, grime, and dirt left behind just like that. And once you're all complete with that and everything is weathered, you just want to finish it up with a clear coat. I'm using a spray matte clear coat. I don't want gloss and it's going to end up looking just like this. And there you have it. Your new prop piece is all done. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, you should think about stopping over and seeing me at cccosplay.com. There you can find articles and tips to help you take your cosplay to the next level. Also, if you sign up for the membership email list, I'll send you a few surprises and let you know about special things before anyone else has a chance to hear about them. It'll be our little secret. And remember, stay crafty.